Hello and welcome. Before we get started, I have to unfortunately say that for some reason this game doesn't like being recorded in full screen and uh, game capture doesn't work either. But unfortunately I noticed that too late, meaning that I've recorded the whole thing only to then find out afterwards there's no image, there's no or well video recording of it. But I do think, while certainly some of its value gets lost without seeing the images, um, there's a few, not necessarily jump scares, but um, I guess frightening imagery occasionally, um, some stuff that sets the mood. I do think it still works as a sort of like an audio novel, and uh, therefore I still wanted to allow you to, you know, watch or at least listen to the recording. Um, I don't think it detracts too much from it. Just you can sort of have it on in the background. I think it's still quite cool. And I'll just, you know, put up an image from the intro sequence over the rest of it just because just so it's not a fully black screen. Uh, I apologize for that. Um, but it did take me about an hour <laughs> to record all of it. And I didn't just want to throw that all away. So yeah. It's. I think it's still fine and should be enjoyable to listen to at least. Yeah, just treat it like an audio book. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the video nonetheless. And with that, hello and welcome to another Indie Sunday, where today we're going to be playing Milk Outside a Bag of Milk Outside a Bag of Milk, the sequel to Milk Inside a Bag of Milk Inside a Bag of Milk, that I also played on an Indie Sunday about half a year ago at this point. This game is a little bit longer than the last one. Uh, the last one was pretty much like 15 minutes, a uh, short journey of helping a girl buy some milk. And this one, at least from what I know, I think it's about an hour, maybe a little bit longer. So, how can I actually... Okay, with the mess. Let's go into a new game. I'm walking to my room, trying not to look around. Playful shadows dance around me here and there. They dash all over the walls, the ceiling. One of those shadows whizzes past me, touching my face ever so slightly. I smile and continue walking, paying it no mind. Sometimes it's so easy to lose self-control and track of time, spinning in a joyful dance. But I'm in a bit of a hurry here. Mum told me to go to bed. I walk past the kitchen on the way to my room. The door is shut, but I can still feel the chilling air coming from the other side. My first thought is that there's a living corpse blowing into the keyhole, laughing mockingly. <laughs> That's so silly. I'm absolutely sure we have no corpses in our kitchen. I know for sure that we've never had any corpses in our kitchen. I'm absolutely sure that... I break into a run and dash toward the closed door. The shadows intensify their chaotic dance. Are they trying to stop me or calm me down? I don't know. It doesn't matter right now, don't you get it? I wave my hands around as I run, trying to chase away my annoying pursuers, but then I suddenly realize that I won't be able to stop in time. I've got no other choice but to break the door down. If there's somebody inside, I'll surely scare them to death. But wait, how can I scare to death someone who's already dead? What if it actually revives them? No, 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 no. I don't want that. What do I do? I couldn't fully complete my thought when my shoulder hit the door and it flew open. As I expected, there was no living corpse inside. But there was a bag of milk I bought today, sitting right in the middle of the table, watching me with its unblinking eyes. I stare back, nothing happens. Although, what exactly did I expect? Gratitude? 
Have I done something that warranted it? A bag of milk probably doesn't care whether it's on the shelf in a store or on the table in my mom's kitchen. On the other hand, nobody would drink milk inside the store, which means I took it from the safest place in the world and into the scary unknown. I'm so sorry, you poor thing. I turn away in shame and leave the room in a hurry. I only bring others trouble. I walk toward my room through a narrow corridor. I meet a familiar formless creature at the door. It locks me in its clutches and starts sniffing every inch of my body like a hungry dog. I'm not struggling. I know it's useless. I just stay silent and endure its tight grip that stops me from moving. After sniffing me from head to toe, the creature holds out its ugly paws, bearing a single claw, thin and sharp like a blade. Again, I stare questioningly into the monster's bottomless eye sockets. Don't move. The creature squeezes my hands until my veins start bulging, and I just keep staring into the black cavities where its eyes should be, ignoring all pain. I've promised so many times. Stay put. The moment it says that, its claw pierces my arm. I don't feel anything other than the barely discernible crawling under my skin and the ring of tightly sprung sinews. But then, then the claw injects its venom into me. It hurts. A white veil appears in front of my eyes. My fingers cramp and start twitching frantically. I lose control over my body and slowly slide to the floor. Just like last time. But... Why... Why do I feel so hot? I feel my blood boiling up. Strong shivers run through my body, paralyzing every single cell, while my veins and arteries heat up, almost bursting from that pressure. I try screaming, but instead of producing words, I vomit thick, milky foam. The creature notices it and throws itself at me in anger, grabbing me by the throat while keeping the poisonous claw inside my arm. Kill me. Kill me. Hysterical screams resound through the corridor. In a fit of madness, the creature starts scratching my neck. Bright splashes fly everywhere, hitting the walls with a loud sound. I try to imprint where every drop fell in my memory so I could gather them all later. I need to remember. I need... A new wave of pain washes over me. Everything turns pitch black in an instant. Say it. I'll never drink milk. Ever again. I... Say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. Say it again. I'll never drink milk ever again. I'll never drink milk ever again. I finally get to my room. I'm so tired of all this fuss. Thankfully, I still feel comfy and warm in my room. Even the weird sounds coming from the outside don't make me anxious at all. Mom told me to go to bed, so I need to perform all the needed preparations. I've washed my face and now I'm standing in front of the mirror with a toothbrush in my mouth. I look at my reflection. It shows absolutely no desire to sleep. Yeah, I get how you feel. And there was a time when the last minutes before I sleep were my favorite time of the day. I loved anticipating the inevitable moment when the reality and the dream world would clash. I woke up for that moment's sake, lived through the day for it. My biggest dream was to sleep all day long. It would have been so cool, but the dreams always slowly but surely slipped away. As if somebody fished them out of my head, one after another. 
one after another, until nothing was left. And now I have to sleep again, even though I don't feel any need for it. After finishing with my face, I usually reach out for my pills. It's funny, but I have no idea how they work separately, since I always swallow them as a bunch without thinking. Now I want to have a better look at it, to twirl it between my fingers, to chew on it. I do anything to stall for just a little bit more time. A smooth protruded red capsule is looking at me. It's covered in a murky semi-transparent film, but I can still discern its contents. So what do we have inside you? I gently press on the capsule from both sides, and to my surprise it turns out to be soft and squishy. I press harder, and the capsule pops. Sticky, bright red liquid pours out. Filthy, filthy. The pill flies straight to the waste bin, and I start rigorously washing my hands. No, there's no way I'm drinking that. Next was a flat pill of the same blood red color. There were some letters printed out on it. Oh, I get it. This is the medicine that makes me really sleepy. But it's not the type of sleep I want. That's not it at all. It's fake. No, no, no. I don't even want to look at it. The pill flies into the waste bin as well. The next half an hour goes by in a similar fashion. I study every pill from all sides and then I find a reason not to swallow it. I invent my own medicine instead and enjoy swallowing them one after another, letting myself drown in their healing effects. Hey, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my hand doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my head doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my heart doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my stomach doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my eyes don't hurt anymore. How come I didn't think of this earlier? This is so simple. I need to brag about it to someone right away. But not to my mom. She'll just scold me. And she's sure I'm already sleeping anyway. I don't want to disturb her with that reason. I'll think of something myself. Besides, I just really want some small talk. I wonder, who's going to be my conversation partner? Hey. Long time no see. Hmm. You know we're only supposed to meet once per day, right? Why does your voice sound so grim? Naturally, I've read the manual. Judging by the pictures, the overdose side effects are the usual headaches, dizziness, exhaustion. Basically, nothing I can handle by myself. After all, now I know how to do it. You didn't reply. Aren't you even a little bit happy? Not even the slightest bit? I'm pretty exhausted after today. Well, I guess you are too. That's not true. You need to go to bed. No, you've been in control for way too long already. It's my turn now. Alright. I'll just stay silent until the medicine's effects wear off. How about that? Hey, you can't do that. You need to do your best to make me feel better. That's exactly what I'm doing. What a bully. Actually, why am I even worried about this? In reality, I don't need you at all. Hmm? I'm so energetic and I feel great, which means I can do anything. And you? You can only watch and agonize over your uselessness. <laughs> I can imagine how angry you are right now. Yeah, I'm all beside myself. By the way, you're the one that's useless. That's not what... Okay. And pathetic. Don't even try ruining my mood. I want to have fun while we're together, alright? So you're the one calling the shots now? Yeah. Well, let's see how long you can last. We'll see, yeah. I... Am I really that pathetic? Say something. I can feel tears streaming down my cheeks, hanging from my chin, and then falling on my clothes, burning holes in them. That was fast, but not unexpected. Hey, at least I tried. 
Go wash your face, then we'll decide what to do with you. I'm in front of a mirror again. I keep staring at my reflection, trying not to get distracted by the sneery looks the walls are giving me, trying not to drown in their giggling. But then me in the mirror also shows me a creepy smile, bears her teeth at me. I shut my eyes, but that doesn't help. It wouldn't have helped even if I sunk through the floor. I start counting in my mind. Two squared, two by two squared, a square squared, a square pyramid squared, a pyramid Pyramidal structure cubed, pyramidal structure hypercubed. I feel better, but my head is splitting apart now. Sorry for being rude. It's not your fault. It's never your fault. Fine, you can keep on blaming yourself, but don't overdo it. I don't know why, but I thought I'd be able to take control. I was almost ready to. I was sure I'd be able to change something. After all, I was able to buy milk, you know. Yeah, you ought to know how challenging it was. Or is that why you threw away the medicine? What a stupid decision, right? Whatever it was, it was your decision. Does it even matter? What do you think? I can't be sure about anything, and you don't take me seriously anyway. Then why did you do that? I felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. It's true, the pain subsided for a bit at that time, but now I feel it triple in force. It hurts so bad. You know what to do. Dejected, I reach out for the shelf with my medicine. I swallow the pills one after another, chasing away the unpleasant visions that keep floating up in my memory. And yet, my mind still draws a terrifying picture. Lumps of coagulated blood and transparent coating travel down my esophagus, scratching its soft walls, leaving behind furrows. I shake my head violently. I don't care if it makes me feel dizzy or worsens my pain. I just don't want to think about something so repulsive. You still haven't changed. What do you mean? You're afraid of being alone. This worries you much more than pain. Yeah, I guess. I toss the last pill into the air and catch it with my mouth. I lie on the floor. I look at the ceiling. I can clearly hear water running in the metal pipes up there. I hear the cracking of concrete blocks that will someday surely fall on my head. But I'm not afraid of that at all. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Rather, it's rearing its claws from somewhere below, waiting for me to lose focus. Want to talk about it? No, I've had enough of talking. What do you want then? I I just want to lie down for a bit. carefully extract thoughts that are yet to be fully formed from my head and lay them out on the ceiling in orderly rows. Now it's my corkboard. In hopes of seeing the whole picture, I switch them from one place to another, pile them on top of each other, scatter them around. In the end, I throw them off with my hand, annoyed, and start over. 
can't do it. You can always imagine your thoughts as something small and swarming, like cockroaches. Ooh, I hate cockroaches. Can I make them fireflies? I don't mind either way. I don't even have time to blink before my thoughts, they're fireflies now, start whirling all over the ceiling of their own accord, forming whimsical patterns. I can only observe them and wait for the right moment. It's just that moment doesn't come. The mocking sounds of flapping wings coming from the ceiling make me start losing my patience. Enough! I hate you! I spring to my feet and scream at the top of my lungs. The fireflies scatter. Good job. Now start over. No way! Unstable behavior makes you look bad. I don't give a damn. So that doesn't bother you? Should it? No. A lot of people act like this. Really? There's nothing shameful about snapping at someone, if you have a reason for that. You did have a reason, didn't you? You'll surely get better, believe me. And now start over. <laughs> You're at it again. What do you mean? Never mind. And I've changed my mind anyway. Please don't stay silent for this long anymore. I'm having a hard time without your help. Fine. I raise my eyes to look at the ceiling once more. Sadly, all my fireflies seem to be hiding somewhere. I need to find them. Go on. I glance around the room. There are too many places for a creature as small as a firefly to hide here. They can be anywhere. Suddenly, I hear a deafening rumble. The clock just hit midnight. It's so late already, but I can't go to bed right now. Will you help me? Please tell me you'll help me. Come on, stop bullying me. You promised to talk to me. What were you thinking while lying on the floor? What do you mean? You should know it better than anyone else. Hmm. That's the thing, I have no idea. This is weird. Will you tell me? I... I roll my sleeves and start rubbing my eyes intensely. They're so itchy. My eyes are itchy. Did he br Did you bring- Ah, did you drink milk or did he bring milk? Did you drink milk? I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another. Will my eyes stop itching? I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another. All my eyelashes, one after another. If I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another. What have you done? I need to gather the glass. And then... And I need to have a bath. And then... Here, drink some milk. No! I stand in the middle of the room. My mouth agape, gasping for air. I think I just experienced death. I don't know any other way to explain what happened. Well, that was surely something. Will you tell me or not? About what? Let's look for the fireflies instead. You're acting weird. Help me instead of running your mouth. I've already have had enough adventures before bed. I need to gather my thoughts quickly and go to bed. And my thoughts are hiding from me. <laughs> To be honest, I have no idea where to look for them. Me neither. I guess we'll have to tear the whole place apart. 
No, 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 and no. If I make even the smallest of messes here, I'll feel really bad. All the things should stay in their places, and that's it. Why? You're trying to come up with a reason right now. Who, me? No, of course not. I think you forgot to put up your mind block. I can see through you. Rude. Alright then, so we need to find a bunch of tiny insects inside a mountain of junk without moving anything, even an inch. Yeah. My oh my. I have an idea. Last time, becoming a visual novel character helped me achieve my goal. Now I want to become a point-and-click adventure game character. You know, those games have moments where you just look at different objects and something inevitably happens. It sounds so fun. And what about the things you use regularly? Do you, you're f do you refuse to touch them as well? It would make it even more interesting. This is so childish. I want to know what's the best part. You'll be the one doing it. Oh no. Oh yes! I start panicking as soon as I get in a multiple choice situation. I'll just keep changing my mind and end up crying and running away. Do you want that to happen? You're such a handful. <sighs> You've already proven that you're able to make decisions. Why not continue on that road? Come on, don't be so boring. I was just teasing you. You don't have to bear the whole burden. Asking for help is a reasonable decision too. Let's begin already. I go to the middle of the room and look around. Where would I hide if I were a tiny firefly? Ah, this is so thrilling. My heart gets warmer from the pleasant anticipation. Hey. What? Look down. I look down. After a moment, a small ball of light and warmth crawls out from under my sweater. Wowie! There's smoke coming from me close. <laughs> Whatever. carefully grab the firefly. It's pleasantly scorching to the touch. I put it on my shoulder. I'm sorry, little guy. Time to come home now. As if it was in order, the firefly slowly drifts up, circles around my head for a bit, and then flies into my ear with the speed of a bullet. <laughs> it tickles. One down. Let's look for the others. Yeah. Okay, there's a lot of options. The radio? Let's turn that off. That's slightly better. What is that? Plants of some sort? Right, insects enjoy pollinating the flowers and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I guess. I get close to the flower shelf. I sniff around, the leaves smell of dust and cardboard. And death. You know those plants are long dead, right? I'm not sure a dead plant will be able to attract any insects. Well, we kinda don't have a choice here, you know? Still, you're right, let's continue searching. Why don't you just throw them out? Weren't you listening to me at all? alarm clock. I look at the alarm clock. Time continues its unstoppable flow. It's so late. Are you tired? You bet I am. I let out a theatric yawn and hold out my arms to the sides. One, two. <sighs> then I raise them above my head. Three, four. Maybe a little workout will help me freshen up. Good idea. Do you remember the exercises you've been taught? I think so. I take a hesitant stance. What was it? Heels together, toes apart? Whatever, I'll go with that. Count down five minutes. Fine. You have a clock right in front of you, though. I can't look at its hands for too long. At first I feel like they start moving in the wrong direction, and then they disappear altogether. And then things always get messy. 
Last time I saw a pair of eyes on the clock face. And also, I used to hear voices back in the day. They pleaded for help, I think. What a mess. Truly a mess. It was a mess, right? A mess. Why well, are you counting down? My god, finally. What do you mean? I was trying to get through to you for half an hour. Huh? Forget it. You see the firefly? N no. Let's continue searching then. Notes. Your usual notebook pages glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn on them. It's the only kind of information I can take in without trouble. They've said side effects? Yeah. I thought you know them by heart. Yeah. This is not your handwriting, isn't it? Of course it's not. Shaky, broken lines, ugly numbers. It's not writing, it's more like claw marks. Don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice. My scream makes the pages rattle restlessly. After a moment, a firefly appears from underneath one of them. After looking around in a business-like manner, it takes off into a business-like flight and ends up entering my business-like ear. Hey. Let's continue searching. The pills? I look at the mound of pills and it makes me feel dizzy. I don't want to think about it. I don't... What's wrong? I've almost skipped my dose for today. How reckless. I could have died. Hey, calm down. You've already fixed that. Yes, because you ordered me to. Is that an accusation? Of course not. It was what saved me. Well, that's reasonable. I heave a deep sigh, come closer and extend my hand. Wow, it's warm. The moment those words leave my lips, one of the bottles overturns. Pills rain down from it and along with them... A firefly! Hooray! After circling above my head a couple of times, it finally lands in my palm. The firefly rushes up my arm and, upon reaching my shoulder, crawls straight into my ear. Is that where your ears are? You mean on your shoulder? Okay. My mind becomes a bit clearer. I turn my eyes toward an inconspicuous shelf near the mirror. There's a glass with a toothbrush sitting on it, and a small towel is hanging nearby. What a wonderful sight. My fireflies are smart and good. They would never get in there. They know about personal hygiene. Okay, let's look somewhere else. Hmm. A trash can? I get close to the waste bin and look inside it with curiosity. Bill packaging, notebook pages, and other garbage. Boring. There's nothing here. Indeed, no self-respecting firefly would have hide in a heap of garbage. Can't disagree with you here. An umbrella. The umbrella emanates a faint sense of coolness. No wonder it's the only thing that defends me against the thunderclouds that gather under my ceiling. It's such a blessing that it can do it without my help. Still, a firefly won't hide in a place like that. It will catch a cold and be unable to fly. You don't want to check it? Why? I'm sure we won't find anything there. Okay. This is my sketchbook. Half of its pages are blank, which means it'll still be good for a couple of years. You draw that rarely? Why? Isn't that obvious? If I run out of pages, I'll... If I run out of pages, I'll have to buy a new sketchbook. I can't get to the stationery store on foot. I'll have to take the bus. Do you even realize what kind of nightmare that can turn into? Or maybe you can ask your mom to buy you new to buy one. Buy what? Ask whom? Can you even form coherent sentences? Don't play dumb. Ask your mom to buy you a notebook instead. Instead? So you want me to perform a string of actions, but you're also telling me to do one instead of another? Then how would I decide which action to take? You're so dyslexic. Man, you're a tough case. You lack empathy. Is that my fault? 
I get closer to the sketchbook, stepping over the wires, the sleeping bag, the cracks in the laminates, and the window's reflection. The sketchbook is lying on the stool. From my height, it seems like the stool is missing two legs. I squat and look again. All the legs are in place. Will I be able to think of an interesting allegory? Oh, let's not go there, okay? I stand up and study the sketchbook from inches away. Its pages are pure white. The last drawing is buried on the previous page, the way it should be. Too bad, I'd love to see it. Maybe next time. A sudden gust of chilly wind breaks into the room and makes the pages rustle. Oh no! I shut my eyes. A distinctive sound of pages turning echoes with headache in my head. I know what's going to happen. The rustling has stopped. Even though the wind is still howling from every direction, it can only mean one thing. The notebook is open on the first page. If I wait a little longer, the wind will close it. I won't have to look. I'll wait a little longer. i wait... You know what, let's actually wait here for a bit. Okay, it's probably not going to happen. No! It's okay, just do it. No way, I know you're lying. Calm down. No! Calm down. No! Fine. I open my eyes with utmost caution. The notebook is still open in the middle. No drawings, nothing. The pages are still pure white. Did I imagine it? I don't know. Did you? You're the smart one here. You tell me. Next time, don't close your eyes. What did you... I couldn't finish speaking because the pages started moving again. Don't close your eyes. Don't make me do it. I'm scared. Trust me. The rustling grows louder. The pages lift up. I can almost see the outlines of drawings on previous pages. No way. Everything that is in the past should stay in the past. You couldn't convince me. That's it, I'm closing my eyes. Look, look there. A barely visible light seeps through the pages. With every new gust, it becomes brighter and brighter. A firefly. The wind immediately stops. For a moment, the world sinks into perfect silence. But only for a moment. The buzz that has always been haunting me fills the surroundings, but it doesn't matter now. Goodness gracious, little boy, you make me so scared. The firefly blinks, flies up and enters my ear, buzzing loudly all the way. It spends some time looking for the perfect spot in my head, but then its buzzing dies down. Whew. Are you okay? We're running short on time, so let's continue searching. Well, there's a backpack of some sort. I look down. My school bag, worn down and silly, is almost screaming of its own uselessness. From another angle, it looks like a full belly. Its contents are also regurgitating, decomposing and turning into a sticky, mushy substance. What a cool image. I need to remember this. Totally not cool. Tell me what's inside your bag instead. Nothing special, mostly just all sorts of books. I've taken out all the pens and notebooks out of there and I'm not interested in anything else. You used to go to school, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I had a blast all the way. Are you sure you understood my question? Do you think everything in my life should be doom and gloom? Why well, you're wrong. Alright, alright. What did you like the most there? Hmm. Well, the rooms were really bright, not like at home. That's it? Don't brush me, let me remember. Well, the beds were also soft and the food was nice. By the way, I attended all the classes. The others always skipped. They probably got told off so hard. I smiled gently, absorbed in warm memories. You never graduated, though. Yeah. Do you remember your last day there? It was a normal day. Dad picked me up earlier than usual. He told me that I'm already too old for the school curriculum. I also realized that some time ago. The tasks were way too easy. 
Then we got into the car and went home. Mum greeted us there. We had dinner and went to our rooms. And what happened then? I don't remember. And does it even matter? Tell me about it again. Is your memory that bad? Please. Oh, fine. That day, Dad picked me up from school earlier, explaining to me that I need to grow up. It's not like I could completely grasp what he meant. Either way, I didn't resist. We got into the car and went home. Mum greeted us there, we had dinner together and went to our separate rooms. Satisfied? Once more. Dad dragged me out of the school building while I was scratching and biting. The teachers didn't interfere. That scene was ordinary for them. Who knows what the little brat has done. Then he pushed me into the car and we drove home in complete silence. Mum greeted us there, we had dinner together and went to our separate rooms. Please, let's not discuss this further. No? You'll tell me again. Dad bought milk on our way home. Again. I hate milk so much. Mum wasn't home. Again. I hate mum so much. What happened next? Suddenly I feel someone's eyes on my back. Knowing that these moments should never ever be ignored, I turn around. But there's nothing there. What happened next? Everything that happened next happened after something that led to everything that happened after what happened. I look at my bag again. Light pouring into the room, through the window glints on the metal parts. And there's also a shadow underneath it, which means it's real, sadly. Whatever, I don't care anyway. I almost end up kicking the bag in a fit of sudden anger, but I manage to stop myself in the nick of time. If I move it even an inch, the whole picture will collapse and I'll go blind. It has already happened, countless times. What do you mean you'll go blind? I've spent months memorizing the location of every item in my room. That's why I can see them so clearly and vividly. You won't get it. Look at your feet. I look down and see that a small insect is crawling toward me from my bag. It's barely glowing and it can't even fly. I guess this firefly is really tired. I bend down to pick it up. The firefly starts glowing brightly as soon as I touch it and then flies up. Here you go, boy. Good job. After doing a victory lap around the room, it flies towards me with high speed. I shut my ears, anticipating the firefly to enter my ear. That's exactly what happens. After it gets inside, it buzzes for a little while and then goes silent. This one is kind of sad. I wonder why. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it's no longer alone. Sure. Let's continue searching. A fan. <laughs> What's funny about that? I imagine myself being a firefly that is looking straight at a giant fan. And? I'd be so jealous. The only thing preventing it from flying is a cage it's locked in, and a cable. It's like an inmate, if you think about it. It's so sad. Yeah. Let's continue searching. What else is there? This. Sleeping bag, maybe? <laughs> this is my sleeping bag. It's soft and warm. I'm sure that no living creature would be able to resist the temptation to spend a minute or two inside. They'd want to dig deep into it with a couple of favorite items, close their eyes, and then... Hey, did you fall asleep? Huh? I gently slapped my cheeks to return myself to senses. It's already way past midnight. Usually I'd be sleeping like a log at this time, but right now I can't. Let's continue searching. Hey, maybe we'll find something inside. No, my thoughts don't have a feature of putting to sleep. Quite the contrary, they always cause insomnia, just like tonight. Okay. Uh, what is that? It's not easy to get out of here. <laughs> okay. That? I look up toward a very high place under my ceiling. I can hear a countless number of small legs marching inside the AC unit. 
Oh well. What happened? Fireflies can't be friends with cockroaches. We'd better look somewhere else. Why would cockroaches be there? Have you forgotten? You were the one who told me to think of my thoughts as cockroaches. Yes, but... They became fireflies afterwards, but cockroaches don't disappear just like that. So they occupied this place. You understand now? I'll pretend I do. Yeah, we're not looking at that. Uh, can I look? Yeah, I can look at that. And what are those? Ah, those. Those are the photos of my best memories. But they're blank. I stared at them so intensely that I burned them with my eyes. <laughs> now they're just covering the cracks in the walls. Cracks? Look at it. Are we continuing the search or what? Okay, we are. Uh, we actually aren't unless I can find something else. Because I think I've looked at everything. Oh, no, I haven't. Not at this. I doubt it. All of the compartments are locked. What if... I don't even want to think about what's inside. Who knows what I'll end up imagining. Yeah, fair enough. Alright, we've looked at it. This is moving. Okay, we'll just ignore that. I've managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. Why not? If I lose something and then find it, it's just going back to the starting point. No changes at all, a zero sum. And happiness is always about being positive, right? You shouldn't think too much, it hurts you. I want to sleep. How about you get some fresh air before sleeping? What do you mean? Well, go to the balcony, breathe in some air. Somehow those words triggered a panic attack in me. I subconsciously step away from the balcony. I don't think it's a good idea. Why? This may sound silly, but I feel like someone is watching me. Alright, let's stay here. Yeah. What are you going to do? What's with this silly question? I'm going to sleep, of course. Hoping that tomorrow will only come after a year or a decade. Imagining myself to be outside of my mortal shell, but at the same time still being me. Ridiculous, like milk outside a bag of milk, and yet... And yet? You don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know that our time is running short. You won't take another pill. Of course not. In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. And the day after tomorrow. And never ever. That's a good Biden. No. I have one more small favor to ask. A really, really small one. What is it? I've blurted out way too much today. A lot of stuff I'd want to forget forever. I don't blame you, but was it really necessary? You'll see tomorrow. No, I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. Fine. What's the favor? I, um... I nervously scratch my wrists and bite on my lower lip. Wait a minute, you're afraid to tell me? Yes. I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm also scared that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop, I get it already. Still, I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. No, you. I crawl into my sleeping bag. The lower part of the room is very cold. I hurry to wrap myself in blankets, even though the electric heater is working hard to keep me warm. I'm sad because the dreams just won't come anymore. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Of course I'll believe you. I know, it was a joke. Well anyway, I washed my face, brushed my teeth and lied down. Started imagining that I'm watching a dream. I didn't sleep at all, of course, and always looked sleepy in the morning. 
After a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating in the air, strange silhouettes that appeared in the most unexpected of places. Bulging eyes with trembling pale pupils. It was scary, you know? Then one day, I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of the room and couldn't move for a while. And then silhouettes, letters and eyes were hanging over me and hissing. It was horrible. And... Well deserved, I guess. It felt like I was caught in the biggest lie in the world. Yes, it felt exactly like that. After that, I stopped. But the silhouettes, letters and eyes stayed here. I guess they like this place. They always follow in my wake, peeping at me. And I'm kind of scared of them and can't even argue with them. But today... Today... Well... I... Still too scared to tell me? Of course, they're still listening, you know? Use your hands. Alright. I start chaotically twirling my fingers with enthusiasm, forming complex shapes. You want me to tell you a bedtime story? Shh. And I was trying so hard here, don't you get it? They'll hear you. Relax, nobody can hear you. So what do you say? I'd be happy to, but I have no idea how to tell them. Oh, it's incredibly easy. Just talk about something without stopping. Sounds silly. But it's not. And meaningless. You don't know what you're talking about. I know enough to realize that we'll just end up wasting time. Let's focus on something actually important. Boring. Fine. Close your eyes. I wake up on a wooden bench. In front of me lies a narrow, dimly lit alley. An awfully familiar road. Where could I have seen it? Finally. I hear a voice coming from the side. I turn around and see a boy with a weird expression on his face. You're late. Um, who are you? The boy blinks in bewilderment. We're not going anywhere like this. Try again. And he takes a very deep breath. You are late. I stare at him, confused. He stares back, also confused. Sorry? The boy nods, satisfied. See? Much better. Do you have a name? My name's Tresca. I give the brat an evaluating look. He's so young, yet already coming at me with questions like that. None of your business. And besides, will anyone tell me what I'm doing here? Hey, that's rude. It's not like there's somebody else here besides me. Haven't they told you anything? I know all there is to know, for one. About what? You're obligated to escort me to the store. Tresca says that and strikes a victory pose. No way I'm doing that. You do understand that refusal is futile. Well, aren't you full of yourself? I'm serious. I'm not the one who decided that. Do you think I'm delighted with your company? He's weird. Constantly shifting between happiness, sadness, loudness, silence. He's a wacko, and his name is stupid. Are we going or what? You can go, and I need to think. I'd be happy to, but I don't know the way. Tresca puts on a cunning smile. I bite my lower lip in frustration. I'll be honest with you, I don't like you. He simply bursts out laughing in reply. I do like you though. Then he grabs my hand without hesitation. I don't even have time to retort. Lead the way. Our trip to the store went fine, if not for the fact that Tresco was walking way faster than me. And, on the other hand, at times he stopped abruptly and went backwards, studying the ground underneath his feet. In the end, the trip took a lot longer than it should. After reaching the store's doors, we are greeted by a sign. We're closing in 20 minutes. Who is that? 
Guess who? Who had the bright idea to indicate their working hours in this way? They probably have st special staff for this. Someone who runs to change the sign every five minutes. It's convenient. Are you joking? Yeah. You're so annoying. It's much better than being boring. How old are you, by the way? None of your business. Ah, ah, ah. And what's your name? None of your business. I was ready to slap the living hell out of the brat, but a scary looking man suddenly appeared behind the glass. He's holding a cardboard sign that says we're closing in 15 minutes. Let's go. What are we waiting? What are you waiting for? Huh? Oh yeah. After another round of going across the long row of canned products, we realize that we're lost. I can't believe... I, I know the sounds are different, but I can't remember. They're so close to each other still. I can't believe you don't know where they sell milk. I, um... Maybe you should ask somebody for directions. Sure. Is that... Ah... Uh, don't know if I got it the wrong way around. Hey, wait up. Okay, that is him. Tresca lets go of my hand and walks confidently toward one of the few store's customers. That person is standing with their back to us, studying something on the shelf. Hello, can I? I can't hear neither the second part of his question nor the reply he gets, but my good-for-nothing friend freezes in place, looking the customer straight in the eye. I hurry toward them. yours. The customer talks to me. He speaks with disgust while wearing a scornful expression. I, um, if he's yours, please get him away from me. Y yes, I'm sorry. I grab Tresca's hand and lead him away. He's still looking at the customer, his mouth ajar and eyes popped. He's also shaking. Only when we turn around the corner, Tresca calms down. What was that? I... I got so scared. He said... What? No, not again. Suddenly, Tresca starts screaming like crazy. I cover his mouth with my hand. His face is burning. He's crying. Can you act normal? You... you don't understand. Of course I don't. I don't understand anything. Annoying other people is still wrong, though. This is something you don't understand, it seems. You're mean. <laughs> you me? Tresca, tre Tresca pushes me away and runs off. Trat. At the edge of my vision, I see the store staff hang a new sign on the door. There you are. I meet Tresca at the cash register. Oh, was that her? Uh, I meet Tresca at the cash register. Before that, I managed to visit the milk department after finding out where it was. Hey you, move. I hear an angry voice coming from the other side of a long queue that has formed after Tresca. I squeeze through toward him. What happened? The boy doesn't respond. He just looks at his feet and sniffs. The cashier towers over him. There's a bag of milk lying between them. Is he yours? Yes. Just leave him home next time. People in the queue nod in agreement. Pay for the goods, please. Yes, of course. And a waiting fee. Uh, what? You heard me. I did, but that's unheard of. Tresca starts giggling all of a sudden. And for the fact that your son is a retard, too. But... but you heard me. You know what? In a fit of rage, I throw a banknote to the cashier of much higher value than needed, even counting in all the stupid fees, then grab a bag of milk and turn around on my heels. We're leaving, Tresca. We spend the whole trip back in silence. At some point, we end up turning right toward a gas station. There, Tresca finally breaks his silence. Do you like ice cream? No. Okay. I look at the boy's face. A light flickers in his eyes for a brief moment and then goes out. You know, 
he turns away from the path and walks straight toward the highway with determination. I stare at his back, confused. It seems like you're not helping me at all. A new playful light flickers in Tresca's eyes. There we go. That's the end credits. I'm not sure I quite understand it. Um, I guess that's also partly always sort of the demerit to kind of reading stuff out aloud. Like, if I read something out aloud, I don't actually take in what I'm reading because I have to focus on reading it, like on pronouncing it correctly and stuff like that. Uh, maybe even cadence and stuff like, uh, you know, tone. I can't focus on what is actually written, the content of it. I sort of do, like, still take it in roughly, and so it's not like I'm completely lost in the story. But I can't, natu you know, I can't take in the subtext of it and the deeper meaning behind it. So I'm not quite sure. Um... I guess you could technically see that last part uh, in her dream as kind of like a, uh, not an homage really, but kind of like a take on the first game where you're like the girl herself was actually us, the player in the first game, and the boy was her. But I don't know if there's deeper meaning behind that still, which I could imagine, um, or not. But yeah. I think that's the end of the credits, is it? If not, there's a long kind of black screen. Okay, it was. Yep. So, that was milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks for doing so, and I'll see you guys again next time. Till then, bye.